Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. For quite some time, I've been contemplating making an LED sign. And of course, I wanted to use the excellent WLED software so I would get all of the effects and the presets and the playlists and all the things that come along with that. But I struggled with what I wanted my sign to say. And I also was concerned about being locked in. What if I wanted to change what my sign said somewhere down the road? You know, what if I wanted to have my favorite NFL team during football season and then change that to my favorite NBA team during basketball season? So I started looking for a way that I could make my LED sign with WLED and be able to update it and change it from time to time. So I'll give you a quick overview of how I did this. And for those that are interested, hang around. And a little bit later in the video, I'll actually go through the step-by-step -step process of how to create these signs. And again, if uh, there'll be links down in the video description for all the parts that I use. I also will link to some of my other uh, related videos that I'll talk about as I go along here in the process. But at this point, let's go ahead and get started with an overview. So for the quick overview, obviously I'm using 3D printed letters. I'll talk about these a little bit more detail in the how-to. Uh, I'm using... Once again, using these styrofoam dinner plates for my diffusers. I might use something different if I were to do over again. Again, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, my controller uh, is all self-contained in this box. And uh, let me pop the back open here if I can. Okay, I got that open. Uh, I'm obviously using a, uh, once again, a Wemos D1 Mini. Uh, yes, I'm using a logic level shifter. I understand a lot of people don't want to use the logic level shifter. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. Really, in this case, because the data run is so short, you probably don't need it. But I always include a logic level shifter. I have a completely separate video I'll post up here about the logic level shifter. Um, and again, I'll talk more in detail about this controller uh, in the how-to section. I did add a completely optional push button and an IR receiver on top for a remote control. Uh, but that's all all included there uh, and then this is going to be the the start of your letter chain but here's the secret that, that really make these things work obviously they're they're magnetically attached was finding these small little three pin uh, connectors and again the I guess the female side you call it female but it's technically just a, a flat and these are actually it's really hard to see these are actually little pogo pins and it, they're pretty strong magnets but they simply connect together and you're going to attach the three wires for your LED strips uh, consistently through each one. In addition, I use these little itsy bitsy teeny tiny magnets and these were a pain in the rear, uh, but they are pretty strong. Um, but you can see where I put these, installed these in each letter. These are the magnets the, that are recessed in flush. Uh, again, the male side and the female side. I did go ahead and put uh, places for magnets at the top and the bottom in case you want to do two row you can either do them like this or you can offset them by half if you're going to do a second row again I'll talk about that uh, in more detail in the how-to um, but that's really what makes these things magnetic these are electrically conductive obviously uh, so you can wire yours through that and just to take a quick look at the inside again I'll go into a lot more detail on the how-to but those of you that just want to see the overview uh, as you recall, I'm using WS2812B uh, pixel strips, and again, while you can feed power from either direction, the signal always goes one way. So our signal is going to come in on one side of the letter, it's going to follow around the strip, and then we're going to come with wire back out to our outside. So that's really how these work. So as, as you connect each ones together, it just continues the, both the uh, 5 volt ground and data signal across the through letter to letter and of course I did also create uh, just a simple spacer you can create this uh, half size or even a full size if you're wanting to do multiple words and obviously the spacer if I can get the back off of it here obviously doesn't contain any uh, any LEDs in there obviously all we're just going to do is just simply pass the signal the signal straight through um, that, that's it in the nutshell for the overview. So those of you that, that are interested, you can now hang around and I'll get into kind of the step-by-step -step details of how to create these yourself. Okay, for those of you that are still with me, I'll, I'm going to go through step-by-step -step on how I built these, uh, each letter and the controller. 
Uh, if you're only interested in certain parts, I will leave uh, links down here along the, the video timeline chapter links. They'll also be in the video description if you want to jump forward to a particular part. But let's start out with the letters themselves. Again, these are 3D printed. And I know a number of you have reached out to me in the comments and, and say that you don't have a 3D printer. Uh, I will leave all the designs for these in a Thingiverse project. Uh, if it's not there uh, right away when I release this video, uh, I'll try to get it up there shortly, so come back and check the video description for a link to that. I'm going to try to do all 26 letters, uh, 0 to 9 numbers, maybe a few uh, punctuation like an exclamation mark. Uh, but I will also leave a blank template that will have uh, the cutouts for uh, the magnets and, and your connectors. And so if you want to take the blank template and want to change the font or the size or something like that, feel free to do that. Uh, if you don't have a 3D printer, uh, you could try to build these out of something else, say even cardboard or balsa wood, uh, but it is very important that everything line up precisely. Uh, those, those pins are pretty small. Um, so that's where a 3D printer comes in really handy because you can duplicate over and over and get very precise results. Um, you know, Before you ask, as much as I would love to be able to, I, I'm not going to be able to print and, and ship these. To be honest, each one of these letters took about eight and a half hours on my Ender 3 Pro printer. So I've just got one 3D printer, so I obviously can't be mass producing these and sending them out. Uh, you might check there are online services if you want to take the files uh, for the particular letters you want uh, and send those out. You can get, get those done online and shipped to you. But unfortunately, I won't be able to print uh, letters for anyone. But uh, again, the important part is to make sure that everything is precisely aligned. So the controller I'm using is basically the same controller I've used for all my other WLED projects. And I have a separate video showing you how to build this controller step by step. And I'll leave a link uh, up on the corner of the screen here and down in the video description as well. Uh, basically consists of a Wemos D1 Mini and an optional, optional uh, logic level shifter that I recommend that you use. But in this case, you could probably get away without using that. I've also added a number of extra wires because I'm going to be adding an optional push button control and an optional uh, IR receiver for uh, infrared remote control as well. Okay, here's the assembled controller in, in the box. And again, there'll be a, a thing on Thingiverse for the design of this box. And again, I mentioned an optional push button, which I cover uh, in the build of the controller, uh, the link that I just gave previously. And there's also... I added, again, this is completely optional, but an IR receiver so you can control this thing with a remote control as well. You don't have to do that. I do talk about the remote control and setting that up with, with WLED a little bit in my hexagon uh, video, hexagon lights. I'll leave that again, that link up here for that. Uh, but really, it's just kind of cramming everything in this box. Uh, the one thing that's going to be very important throughout the entire project is being very consistent in how you wire these. I made the choice to always have my positive 5 volts as what would be my top pin, my data line is the center, and my ground is going to be the bottom. Whatever system you stick with, stick with it all the way across all of your letters, and you'll see that when we get to the letters, because otherwise you're, you're going to reverse polarity. The other thing you'll see here is I have a couple of Wago clips in here is because I'm going to run my 5 volt power supply. I'm using a 5 volt 15 amp that's going to be enough to power about 10 letters. There, there are going to be 24 pixels per letter, uh, at least in the, the size and design that I have. And so that's going to get by with about 10 letters. Any, any more letters than that, you're going to have to look at, at both the larger power supply and possibly even power injection. And I'll cover uh, that towards the very end of the video. But you want to run your supplies to your LED strips separately and not run it through your controller board. So my 5 volts coming in here, I'm simply just splitting 5 volts off to run my uh, Wemos D1 Mini and then also running 5 volts out here that's going to lead to our strips. So that's the controller in a nutshell. Again, that's covered much more in that other video on, on how you actually build this and install WLED. And again, the push button just allows me to turn the, the sign off and on. Uh, cycle through some presets, but that is completely optional. You don't need to have that in your particular build. Okay, now that the controller is built, I'm going to take you through the steps that I used for each letter. And this was a little bit of trial and error for me, so the way I'm going to present it is what I found was the method that eventually worked best for me. Feel free to adopt that or adapt it to uh, whatever works best for you. 
So before we begin actually building the letters, there's one other thing that you're going to need to keep track of as you build these. You're going to need to make sure you know which is going to be your data inside and your data outside, or the data in and the data out signal. And that's also going to be important when it comes time to install these magnets to make sure we're getting the right polarity. Now for something like a letter E, it's pretty easy to keep track of. When you get to something like a letter H that could go either way, or a letter I, it's very easy to get yourself confused. And if you install the magnets the wrong way, these letters are going to push apart instead of pull together. So in the design of these, if you look really closely, you'll notice that one side has a small raised area. The other side is completely smooth. The raised side is meant for the data out side. And that's the, the little one that has the pins on both sides, the little pogo pins. The other one without the little raised piece is for the flat or the data inside. So it's going to be important to make sure you keep track of that as you're putting these letters together. Otherwise, believe me, I found out the hard way, you're going to have a bad day. So the first thing that I did is we're going to hot glue these in. So I scraped a little bit out just to give a, the glue something to bond to in each of these. And I also took another letter that already had the magnets in it and I set it up in the same direction again, making sure I noted which was going to be the data inside and which was going to be the data outside because, again, otherwise these are very small magnets and they're also very powerful, so they're hard to work with. So I want to make sure I have my same side laid down uh, for a letter that already has the magnets and then the one that doesn't. So now I'm going to take uh, two of the small magnets and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stick them onto the existing magnets because now I should be able to bring those straight across and make sure that I have the right polarity that because these should should since they're on the same side should repel each other so now small tweezers here really help so I pull those off to make sure I'm keeping the magnet uh, aligned the right way and then it's just a matter of putting a little bit of hot glue in there and setting the magnet in place uh, again um, if the magnet wants to flip over, then take it back out and start over. The problem is, I had this happen numerous times. I get them all put together, find out one of the magnets had reversed its polarity, and then I'd have to be trying to dig it out of that hot glue. Uh, in fact, I had a couple of cases where I actually had to end up having to reprint a letter. Now, you do want to try to make sure that you have those as flush to the surface as possible. You don't want them to stick out because they're going to keep your letters from coming together, and at that point, your uh, data line connectors may not may not want to touch so just continue to, to work those in place and then let the glue dry and then we'll come back uh, and we're going to repeat that for this and then we're going to flip both of them over and we're going to do the same thing on the other side okay now that one side's done we're going to take these and we're going to flip them over to make sure again we're going to maintain the right magnet polarity and we're going to repeat the same process on the second side and I will say if I had to do this over again I think I would probably try to choose some bigger magnets uh, part of the problem is the sides of these are only two millimeters the size of the letters are only two millimeters and this was the only magnets I could find that were only one millimeter tall so I would have had to made the sides thicker which would have took more filament and longer to print, but dealing with these little tiny magnets uh, were a real pain, and they're also very easy to lose and bounce away somewhere. So uh, think about that in your own design. So after you've got both sides done and given the glue plenty of time to, to set, come back with a little bit of, a, of an X-Acto knife or some sharp object and basically scrape away any extra glue that might be on, on top of the magnet or around the edges. Again, you want this to try to be as flush with the surface as possible. Um, again, if the magnets stick out, then they're gonna stop the magnets or the stop the two letters from coming fully together. So you want these to be as flush to the surface and make sure you don't have any extra glue uh, that's going to get in between the two letters. Once I got all the glue removed, then naturally I always wanted to do a sanity check. check. So I would take uh, some other letters, make sure I had the polarity right on all of my magnets, that they stuck together the way that they were supposed to, that the in data side lined up with the out data side on the next letter. Uh, again, I had messed this up more than once before I came up with this technique. Um, 
So I recommend that you do that before you go any farther and install your diffusers and strips. Next, I wanted to cut and install my diffusers. And to do that, for a template, I simply used one of the, the back panels because I knew it just fit inside the inside edges of each letter. And again, this is the same technique I used on my nano leaf or my hexagon LED lights. Uh, again, I'll leave a link up in the corner to that. Uh, I used these dinner, same dinner, uh, styrofoam dinner plates that I used in that video. I think if I were to do over again, I think I would like to use something that didn't uh, defract quite as much light, something that let a little bit more light through because sometimes the center of the letters uh, aren't as bright as I would like them to be. So you might experiment with different materials. The nice thing about these dinner plates is they're cheap um, and they're obviously easy to cut and easy to install. But again, you might consider playing around with, with some different ideas for diffusers. So once your panel is cut out, now you need to take it and install it inside your letter. You have to use a little bit of care here because there are uh, little corner pieces there for putting the screws in to hold the back in place. Uh, we'll get to that towards the very end. But you have to be a little bit careful here and kind of finagle your way around. Make sure that you don't crease or actually crack uh, the paper plate. It just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of care to, to get that down there and in place. Okay, so once you've got it into place, what I like to do is add just a touch of hot glue to each of the sides and the four corners, not a lot. You don't want it to get in the way of the LED strips that we're going to install next, but just enough to keep that uh, diffuser pushed up tight against the front of the letter. But do use a little bit of care here because that your glue gun is hot enough to actually melt that styrofoam. So make sure you don't leave that in long contact with the styrofoam. But otherwise, it should be pressed up flat against the front and ready to move on. Now almost all of my LED projects, I love to use this double-sided 3M tape. Uh, again, it just gives a little bit better adhesion than what you normally get uh, from the adhesive on the back of the LED, LED strips themselves. This is optional uh, and it does take a little bit of time, but I've always found that if I put this uh, double-sided 3M tape in, peel that off, peel off the back of my LED strips, stick those together, I've yet to have an LED strip uh, come loose over time. So that is, is completely optional uh, if you want to do this, but uh, I do recommend it and I do it on all my projects. The only thing is I do leave a little bit of gap in the tape on the incoming data uh, line inside. That is a smooth side without the little raised piece. And you'll see why I do that in a minute, but that's where all of our wiring connections are gonna take place. So I do leave a small gap in the tape uh, right there on that particular side. Okay, next we need to cut our pixel strips. And again, for these size letters, I use 24 pixels per strip. Uh, you don't want any JST connectors on either end, but make sure that when you cut them, you're leaving yourself an adequate bit of copper pad on each end because we are gonna be soldering to the strips. Okay, next we need to tin uh, all of our connections on our magnetic connectors and our LED strips with a little bit of solder. And you need to be a little bit careful here with your soldering iron because you can melt the plastic pretty easily on these. And since these pins are so close together, it's very easy to create a solder bridge between two pins. So uh, take your time, double check your work. A magnifying glass may help. Just make sure that you're getting a little bit of solder on the pins, but also that you're not creating a solder bridge uh, between two adjacent pins. Okay, we also need to add a little bit of solder to the copper pads on both ends of our uh, LED strip. And if you haven't worked with uh, LED strips before, I do have another video, I'll pop it up there in the corner, about working with WS2812B LED pixel strips, everything from cutting and soldering and how to join them together. Uh, but again, we wanna be a little careful, or just make sure you're not getting too much solder on there and creating a solder bridge. Well, somehow I forgot to film this little part, but. What I've done is taken three small little leads, pre-tinned those, and soldered those to the data input side. That's, that's the, the mag, magnet piece without the little pogo pins. That's going to be our data inside. And you want to cut those relatively short, uh, and you want them to kind of come down and bend at a 90 degree angle. And we're going to solder these onto the input end of our LED strip. Again, pay attention to the arrow on the strip itself make sure that you're putting these on the data inside and not the data outside. Okay, so next you're going to flip your strip around to the data outside. 
and in this case we're going to attach three lengths of wire uh, to the other end and this needs to be enough wire that's going to be able to wrap around the bottom of your letter uh, from the data inside to the data outside. Now one little bit of difference here is you want to solder these wires so that they're pointing back towards the strip not hanging off the other end because we're going to wrap those around the bottom as you'll see in a minute. Okay now we're ready to actually install the strip. First remove the backing tape off your double-sided tape Double check, make sure that you are on the input side. That's the one without the little uh, raised area. And you're going to insert your, your data in pins into your data inside of your, of your letter. And then what you're going to do is just carefully work your way around the inside and apply your LED strip carefully. One other thing I would consider possibly doing differently if I was to do this over, I might move the, the magnetic connectors closer to the front and put the strips further in the back. That would probably give me a little bit better light diffusion than having the, the LED strips closest to the front. So once you've got your strips in, installed and verified that you've got the right in and out connections, what you're going to do now is carefully take the wires and wrap those around. And I actually ended up putting a little bit of hot glue just, just to hold the wires in place. You just don't want them coming up in the middle and casting a shadow in the, onto the, uh, the front of the letters. So again, just uh, run these along. Make sure they stay below the little lip where the back is going to go on. But otherwise, just a couple of spots of hot glue just to hold those in place. And then our final step is to cut these long wires to length, tin them with a little bit of solder, and then very carefully glue them on to the post for the outside of our data. And once again, you have to be very careful here because it is extremely easy to create a solder bridge. So uh, check your connections very carefully and make sure you don't have, you know, your, your five volts touching your data line uh, or that touching the ground, uh, et cetera. Um, but really this is the last step. Uh, again, maybe go back and add a little bit of hot glue at the very end of this last little bit of the data connection. Then naturally I like to test each letter. Um, just take it and verify that you've got all your connections right. It should snap right into the controller with those magnets. I always like to make sure you test both the inside and the outside data line and then flip those around again and just make sure that all of your connections are solid and you don't have any, any problems anywhere with the letter or the wiring. And then finally once everything is tested you can install the back. If you're like most printers there's probably a shiny side and a dull side. I choose to put the, the shiny, shiny side uh, down or inside just to help reflect that much more light. Uh, the screws are optional but they are uh, designed for M2 screws. Uh, M2 uh, by 6 I believe. And you can screw those in there. That is, is optional. The, the back cover snaps on fairly tight. Uh, but it'll depend on the tolerances of your printer. And if you want to lay these flat, like I've been showing this video, you may not want those screws uh, sticking out. But if you're going to stand them up or, or hang them or something like that, I did not print any kind of uh, holder for these, but they're all standard width, so it would be pretty easy to print yourself some kind of stand or holder for these things if you wanted. So at this point, you just repeat that same process for whatever a combination of letters, numbers uh, that you want. You can always go back and, and add new letters later. Um, but there are a couple things I, I want to talk about just in a little bit more detail that I didn't show in the video, but I did mention. And the first one has to do with power injection. I said you can probably get away with about 10, 10 or so, maybe 11 uh, letters before you're going to have to start thinking about power injection. But the way the letters are built, it's pretty easy to do. So the initial power injection is going to be extremely easy. All you've got to do is go ahead and make yourself uh, an end here, a female end, because remember our out is always going to be male, and enough wire to run that back to your power supply. And then all you have to do is simply take this, make sure you've got the polarity right. Again, I always had red on top. Snap it onto there, and you now have power injection. Now I would probably throw a little shrink wrap on there, and then I like to use a little bit of this uh, braided sleeve just to make it look a little bit better but then you can run that you know behind or underneath depending on, on how you're going to mount that but that will get you probably somewhere between 20 and 25 letters before you have to think about any other type of power injection 
But again, that is a very simple way to just add on, and that way you are now powering your entire string of letters from both the beginning and at the end. So the other thing I mentioned is if you want to possibly uh, do two rows of letters, again, you can do that in much the same way as you did power injection. Again, you would create a female end for the end of the first row, except this time you would also include the data line. And so the green wire would also be included there. And you would snap that on the end of your first row. And on the other end, you're going to use a male connector and you run those three wires and you connect it to the start of the second row. And again, you can run the wires behind. Now you might think that you could use a female female and connect these wires right here and avoid the, the long run. But remember, our data signal only flows one direction. So if you're going, if you want to have the short connection here, these need to run the opposite direction because otherwise uh, it's not going to work trying to plug this into that. So if you're going to switch the letters around, my recommendation would be to go ahead and use the longer, longer run of wires, include your data line, just connect the end of this to the beginning of this, and you can create multiple rows of words as well. So with that, I'll bring this video to a close. Again, my goal here is just to give you ideas, not something that uh, you exactly duplicate. Maybe you want different fonts or different letters, and, and I'd just like to provide the ideas that you might be able to adopt to your own project. So if you like this video or found anything helpful, please hit that like button. That lets both me and YouTube know that that you'd like to see more of these types of videos. If you'd like to help support my channel so I can continue to make good videos, you can always buy me a cup of coffee and you can find a link for that down in the video description or the about page of my channel. If you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell icon to be notified when I release new videos. As always, I would like to say thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.